sometimes it's very easy to lose focus on what you need to do, what is a priority, what isn't a priority, all that stuff. So if you write things down, that way you can keep track of them. Perhaps you can keep like a mental to-do list, but I find that keeping a to-do list that's actually written down like on my phone, for instance, it will make me feel like I didn't waste my day and like I didn't completely waste my time. All right, yo, what's up? Hope you're doing well. My name is Suffer Plenty, but everybody calls me Rye. And today I wanna to talk a little bit about tips that I have for dealing with depression. Depression is something that I've struggled with for a very long time. I have had depression since middle school and I got diagnosed with it probably back in like 2019 and only 2018 did I start kind of learning what coping skills were. And this video is all opinion based. It's no professional opinion this is just things that i've learned in my experience that i would like to share with anybody who might not have this knowledge so let's get into the video tip number one is to have a routine i know that this sounds cliche it sounds cringy people say this all the time like you'll hear this from doctors if you ever search depression up on the internet you usually find all these articles and having a routine is like one of the first like important things on there and this was something I overlooked a lot, but I think it depends on how you look at it, that it can be useful. Typically what they'll recommend like online and doctors and all that is to like have an actual full blown, super elaborate, super grand routine. And to be honest, when you have depression that just like isn't really an option. So having a routine doesn't mean that you need to go all out. It just means that you need to have something in place that you do every single day something to keep you on track and keep your mind like where it needs to be in order to be healthy and a productive human being so for me what i have as my routine is in the morning to start my day off right i will take care of myself the bare minimum i will brush my teeth i will you know like clean under my fingernails simple things like that put deodorant put cologne on like whatever i need to do to self-care in the morning that's what i'll do and it's interesting because people always say that you should brush your teeth like twice a day in the morning time in the night time you should have a morning and a night routine but to be honest with you i only have a morning routine I don't brush my teeth at night, I only brush them in the morning. And that might sound gross to some people, but if you have depression, you understand where I'm coming from when I say that if, you know, I let my depression take control of me, I probably wouldn't brush my teeth at all, I wouldn't brush my hair, I wouldn't shower, I wouldn't do anything, I wouldn't take care of myself at all. So just brushing my teeth in the morning time, that's good job, you know what I mean? Like, you did the bare minimum, and the bare minimum counts for something, so having a routine like that it's super simple whether that be making your bed in the morning taking your meds in the morning nighttime turning on music to go to sleep or turning the lights off just super super simple things having any sort of structure in your day it will help you to feel better and to also just be able to get more done and not feel like doo-doo about yourself so that is my tip number one is to have a routine again doesn't have to be anything extravagant just has to be a routine okay tip number two is to take time to clean your space i don't know i don't know man i feel like people who have depression one of their biggest things and one of the biggest giveaways is that their environment is super messy their room is looks like shit the room looks awful basically it's called the depression room for a reason because it looks awful so cleaning your space and just taking care of your surroundings it can allow you to feel better internally if you're living in complete filth in your little depression room you're gonna feel like shit but if you clean that space and you keep it tidy and you keep it maintained you will 100 percent feel better and benefit better your environment is literally everything and I don't know if people really know this or not, but I feel like it's kind of common sense that however you're living externally will affect how you are internally. And so if you have like, you know, like this could tie into tip number one, which is to have a routine, you know, like for me, I always make sure that my space is clean. So sometimes there will be times where my room does turn into a depression room. I mean, literally just this morning, my dresser was filled with 
cans of soda and like trash and like bowls and plates that have been needing to go upstairs but I just haven't taken upstairs. My bed was filthy, there was shit all over the floor. I mean just complete filth and if I take time in the morning to tidy up, clean things up and make things look nice, I will feel better and then as I go it won't be as much to clean, it will not pile up. So if you just take the time to maintain your space, it won't get to that, that point of complete filth. So okay, make my rabbit is fucking chewing shit. Anyway, if you just tidy up your space here and there and you keep it maintained, you will not end up with a depression room, but if you do end up with a depression room, really force yourself to clean your depression room because it will add on to your depression and make you feel worse. Like I said, your environment is everything. One little tip as well, on top of that tip is if you struggle to clean, I know that it's difficult and I know that it's hard. I struggled with it myself in the past like a lot and even to this day I struggle with it a whole lot but I'm much much better about maintaining my space and making sure that it's clean but one thing that I have found that has helped me is to find some sort of motivation. Um, to be able to clean. So whether you're getting a reward afterwards, like, oh, I'm gonna give myself ice cream when I'm done cleaning, or I'm gonna relax with my partner, or, you know, I'm gonna play video games. Like, give yourself something afterwards as a reward, or give yourself a reason to be motivated to do it. My reason for motivation to clean my room is that I have a bunny, and he will chew things if I leave them out, so I have to put things away. And then also, I will listen to music when I'm cleaning, and I don't typically listen to music throughout the day, just because sometimes my depression is so bad that, like, I don't want any sound, if that makes sense. So I will reward myself when I'm cleaning by listening to music and then knowing that this space is good for my bunny so that he won't chew things. Um, and then also, you know, just do it for you. Do it for you. Because it's gonna make you feel good whether you believe that or not. Alright, so tip number three falls with tip number two, which is about your environment. So if you find that it is too difficult to clean your room and keep your space maintained, you know, if you can't clean your room every morning, just tidy up. Or if you can't at night, just clean your room before you go to bed, that way you know it's clean. If that is too much and too overwhelming for you, there is this new thing that I literally just learned of. I don't think it's a new thing, but it's new to me. It's called the 15 minute rule. And you could even extend this to be like the 20 minute rule, the 30 minute rule, whatever works for you, whatever fits in your schedule. But basically all you do is you set a timer for 15 minutes and then you just go ham. And this could be in regards to cleaning or it could be in regards to just knowing that you have things that you need to get done, that you're procrastinating. And that 15 minutes, you are not gonna procrastinate. You are gonna get whatever you need to get done, done, or you are going to clean your space and whatever you were able to accomplish in that 15 minutes, good job, congratulate yourself for that, and what you were not able to accomplish in that 15 minutes, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, you still accomplished some things, and I think dedicating 15 minutes of your time to making your life better is better than not doing anything at all and just like for instance laying in bed and doing nothing the 15 minute rule can really help you and i guarantee you can benefit from it if you try to incorporate it into your own life so hopefully it will help you in some sense if the previous step is too much for you all right tip number four is keeping a to-do list Typically, I'm pretty sure whether you're a teenager, whether you're an adult, we all have certain things that we need to get done throughout the day. For me, you know, like I need to do certain marketing throughout the day to feel okay. Anyway, we all have responsibilities, so those responsibilities need to get done one way or another, and sometimes it's very easy to lose focus on what you need to do, what is a priority, what isn't a priority all that stuff so if you write things down that way you can keep track of them and then on top of writing things down you keep a to-do list so that every single day you can be marking something off of your to-do list whether it be a small task or a big task you're accomplishing something and it will make you feel really good knowing that 
you did something that needed to be done and perhaps you can keep like a mental to-do list but I find that keeping a to-do list that's actually written down like on my phone for instance it will make me feel like I didn't waste my day and like I didn't completely waste my time because I like many people have a struggle of like not feeling good enough oh I wasted my day I didn't do anything even when I did certain things like of like a big priority and then I'll end up doing a bunch of little things and completely forgetting my priority and then I'll feel like crap about it but the thing is I still did other things so even if I didn't do my priority I still did things that needed to be done so keeping a to-do list can keep you focused it can keep you on track and it can also keep you from forgetting to do things that need to be done because let's face it nobody's gonna remember every single thing that they need to do especially when you're an adult and you have things like you know i don't know like doctor's appointments or like if you're a student you're gonna have assignments that you're probably gonna forget about it. it's just gonna help you stay on track stay focused and make you feel accomplished when you are getting these things done so even if you don't have anything going on in your life you can still put simple things on your to-do list like brush my hair, brush my teeth, shower, even self-care, like just relaxing. You can put all these things on your to-do list and then you can mark them off and then you can feel like you had a good day. So keeping a to-do list is very overlooked. Don't overlook it. Tip number five is somewhat controversial. I feel like a lot of people won't agree with this and it's gonna go against those articles and anything that you will Google, things your therapist will tell you, things your doctor will tell you, and that is to not try to force yourself out of it. So take this with a grain of salt because I feel like there are times like if you're stuck in a depressive episode and it's been going on for a really long time and you're not getting anything done, you might have to force yourself out of it, force yourself out of bed, force yourself to get things done. That I understand. But there will be times where maybe you've been having a lot of really good days or you've been manic and suddenly now you're feeling very depressed, you're glued to your bed, you don't want to get out of bed, your brain just kind of needs a recharge and you're kind of beating yourself up about being in bed, allowing yourself to just be in bed and even if you're not sleeping and you're just laying there, that's okay and even if you are sleeping and you just feel like sleeping the day away, sleep the day away. Sometimes it's what we need in order to bounce back and take this again with a grain of salt because everybody is different and I think that you should know yourself well enough to know if this is a tip that will help you or make you feel worse because for me, I really have to read into my feelings and read into where I'm at mentally because there are times that I do have to force myself up and out of it to get things done and there are other times that I'm just gonna sit in my sadness, I'm gonna sit in my sorrow, I'm gonna sleep my day away and then the next day, I'm gonna bounce back. So by allowing myself to just have my depression day, I can bounce back the next day and get everything done that I need to get done. So yeah, this really goes against what people will tell you. They tell you to try to snap out of it. They tell you to just not be depressed, cheer up, all this bullshit. But sometimes you just need to literally just, if you're depressed, just be depressed. You know what I mean? Um, hopefully that makes sense. But sometimes you just need to allow yourself that break. All right, my sixth tip is to be your own friend. And what I mean by this is to like talk to yourself and be your support, be your rock, be there for yourself in the way that you wish other people would be there for you. I'm gonna have a more in-depth video going up fairly soon that goes more in-depth about this if you are interested in that. But as far as just this tiny little tip goes, you might think that it's weird to talk to yourself or like, I don't know, when people talk to themselves in public, they kind of seem weird. So like, that's not what I'm saying to do. But like, if you're by yourself in your bedroom, for instance, and you're struggling, you know, like you're in bed, talk to yourself like, yo, dude, I know we're feeling down right now, but let's just take a, a minute. Let's take a minute to just lay here and then let's do something like let's brush our teeth, let's, let's just get up, let's put normal daytime clothes on, let's just do something, anything, let's go on a walk, you know what I mean, like, you can do this, like, talk to yourself, give yourself words of affirmation, be your own friend, be your support, if you're lonely, talk to yourself, 
wow, this really sucks. Wow, this is going really great. Hey, I'm really proud of myself. I know that a lot of people, they struggle with self-hatred and they kind of just need other people in order to be okay. They can't really be okay being alone with themselves, but being alone with yourself is a skill that you need to learn and how to benefit from being by yourself so that you're not so dependent on other people. And by being your own friend, talking to yourself, and being there for yourself like your rock, you're really going to allow yourself more independence and freedom as far as being able to control your own emotions and regulate. I mean, I think you even hear as kids, we'll talk to ourselves. Like, let's say a kid is like pouring a cup of milk or something and he spills the milk. He's like, uh-oh, I did that, but it's okay. And then whenever you're older, like a teenager, you kind of stop talking to yourself like that. It's okay to pick it up again. If you're pouring a glass of milk and the milk overflows, you can be like, uh-oh, it's okay. I spilled the milk. We're going to clean it up. Talking to yourself like that has really positive benefits and even though it might seem weird It really is helpful and it can help you get through things that you wouldn't be able to get through Otherwise because you really are giving yourself like this push that you might have not been giving yourself that push of before like in the past you might have just been beating yourself up in your head like if you're laying in bed instead of being positive towards yourself and being helpful and talking to yourself like a friend you might be like god damn i'm a piece of shit i'm gonna fucking lay in bed and not do anything because i suck and i'm i don't have the energy to get out of bed because i'm just gonna sit here you know because that's all i can do i can't get out of bed you know what i mean don't tell yourself that even if you're thinking it you were telling yourself these things so Really getting out of that and trying to be positive and helpful and supportive of yourself, it's going to help your self-esteem and it's going to help your depression in return. Alright, so my seventh... Oh my god. Okay, so my seventh tip is super, super helpful and it's also super simple. So it is that if you are depressed, chances are you probably are taking medication. And if that is the case and you're like me, you probably often don't take your meds because you either forget or you just kind of get into a habit of not taking them. I actually haven't taken my meds in probably two or three days now. So I've been really back and forth because on top of depression, I actually have bipolar. So it's kind of important that I take my meds. But I have found that if I, with that first step that we were talking about, having a routine, in the morning, I'll take care of myself and I'll do everything that I need to and that will include taking my meds. And what I have found helps me to take my meds is to keep a water bottle where my medications are because I, I don't know, I can't take pills dry. I have to have water. And if I end up getting my meds out in the morning and then I'm waiting to get a drink and then I come back, I'll see my meds sitting there and I'll be like, oh, well, I'll take them later. And then I'll just keep on saying later, later, later until it never happens and I don't take them. So if I keep my meds in my bathroom and I include them in my morning routine and I keep a bottle of water right beside my medications, I can take them right then and there and it will motivate me to just go ahead and get it out of the way. So if you don't don't keep a water bottle by your meds. You might want to start doing that and it might help you. I don't know if it will help everybody, but it's just something that I have found works for me and it helps me stay on track. I kind of get into this mindset sometimes where I'm like, I'm doing better. Maybe I don't need my meds or just like this place of like exhaustion. Like I'm just kind of tired of taking them. Like I'm tired of needing to be dependent on something to feel okay or to feel like myself. So sometimes when you get in that kind of loop, just being able to take your meds immediately in the morning without having to think about it, it just kind of helps you avoid all of that because taking your meds is important. You're given them for a reason and if you didn't need them, you wouldn't be assigned them. So please take your meds and if you struggle to take your meds, take this tip to heart and give it a try for yourself and let me know if it helps. Alright, so my eighth and final tip for this video is to don't fake your feelings, don't put on a mask, feel your feelings, don't try to be okay if you're not okay. There are too many times that society has tried to tell us that we need to put on a happy face and to be honest, doing that actually hurts you more and it will make you more depressed. So if you're sad, be sad. If you're depressed, be sad. I mean, if you're depressed, be sad. If you're depressed, be depressed. 
Um, if you're feeling any sort of emotion, feel that emotion and express that emotion, even if it appears negative. Feel your feelings. You may not realize it, but whenever you are pretending to be okay when you're not, you're actually kind of invalidating yourself because you're making yourself think that it isn't okay to not be okay when it is. You're making yourself believe that you're just setting yourself up for failure because you're making yourself believe that you're supposed to be a certain way when that isn't the way that it's supposed to be at all. If you're sad, you really need to feel that sadness and be okay with being like, hey, I'm actually like a little sad today and it is what it is, you know what I mean? Like, don't try to fake feelings that you're not feeling. If you're sad, be sad. If you're depressed, be depressed. If you're angry, be angry. Obviously, don't take these feelings out on people. Just feel them. Like, if I'm angry and I'm gonna be angry at the world, that's a problem. But if I'm angry and I'm just gonna be like, yeah, I'm angry today and I'm not gonna force myself to be in a good mood, then that is okay because as my day goes on, because I'm not faking my feelings, I'm feeling them, it will eventually kind of like fade out as my day goes on. And if you're sad and you're being sad and you're not trying to be happy, you'll have this support maybe it depends on who you surround yourself with but let's say for instance myself if i'm sad and i'm i'm with people like my partner for instance i can be like hey i'm actually feeling sad today and she'll be like yeah that's okay that's cool it's like i don't know let's get starbucks or something let's go out let's just like be a little bit more delicate with me whenever you're saying things just make sure that you know that it's okay to feel the way that you do because when you're faking it you're telling your brain that it's not okay and you're making yourself feel like more of a problem when it isn't a problem at all you know like all humans feel these emotions and we should all be allowed to express them in whatever way that means for us as long as we're not being rude or taking it out on other people so those are my eight tips that i can think of these are just things that i have learned in my own experience and things that have helped Helped me. I've been kind of struggling with my depression a lot lately, so I've been kind of thinking about what kind of video I could make to maybe help others who might be in my same position. And this is kind of what came to mind. So let me know in the comments below if you like this video or not. If you did like it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel because I will be making more videos like this in the future. If you would also like to, please follow my Instagram. And if you're into it, I make emotional type emo rap, alternative rap music. You can listen to it on Spotify, but it is available everywhere and until next time peace please take care of yourself and again please try to take some of these tips and use them to incorporate them in your own life to maybe try to challenge your depression and help yourself get out of it just do better for yourself because you're the only person that you 100 percent have in your life and it's really important that you take care of yourself you take care of your environment everything that you're doing right now is going to affect your mental health so if you're taking care of yourself and you're taking care of your environment you're gonna feel good but if you're not you're not gonna feel good and i want you to feel good i want you to be happy and i'm really rooting for you so until next time, peace out. Thank you so much for watching.